Welcome to our TV show Make a Video today. Oh my. We are going to be reviewing the film Power Rangers, released March 24, 2017. High school outcasts stumble upon an old alien ship where they acquire superpowers and are dubbed the Power Rangers. Learn that an old enemy of the previous generation has returned to exact vengeance. The group must harness their powers and use them to work together and save the world. That's the quick number that the film. Now, if you haven't seen the film, you don't be spoiled, then come back when you start watching now. Go check out some of my main videos on my channel. Go watch the film. If you've seen the film, come back. If you don't mind spoilers, hang on a second. And um, then, without your short either way, you need to choose. Alright, we're ready. Let's do this. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I mean, we've all been familiar with Power Rangers. You know, we've all seen the various different TV series over the years. We've all got our favourite teams, favourite individual Rangers, favourite series. I'm not even sure what mine are. Um, cause I've got two, because I've been, because I've had so many, I don't, I don't even know, I can't count. Um, but there have been a few um, previous attempts to, to bring Power Rangers to the big screen. We had the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. We had the Power Rangers Turbo movie. Um, the Turbo movie actually was, a, was actually a backdoor pilot to set up um, the Turbo series. And they didn't really go quite well in, um, at all. Um, I, mean, in fact, I mean, for the Turbo movie, if it wasn't the Debatox, then it would have been a complete frog. And we will cover those uh, for another time. Um, when I was doing the prep for this, for this today show, I thought, right, should we also do do one for the other two as well? Should we? Should we not? So, we will. I'll go and find. So, yeah, we will. I, I'm going to pot those in uh, at some point. So, we'll go and do this another, another time. I think I'd want to do Turbo first, then do the Mighty Morphin one, because I want to talk about that Dark Spirit. She's great. I've got a favourite villain. Uh, so, in terms of favourite series and Paradise Star, my all time favourite. Power Rangers villain is Diva Tox. I loved her. <laughs> There's so many reasons. But many of the fact that she actually is the, pretty much the only being I can think of that actually won. She won. So yeah, so we'll talk about that time. But let's focus on this iteration. So this was kind of like, I don't know, like a reboot or something like Something like a new, supposed to be like a new version of the Power Rangers. But typically, the Mighty Morphin one that we're all familiar with. Um... But, oh my god, there were so many problems with this. So, we'll talk about them as we go along. So, we start the film kind of like eons ago, in the midst of this kind of battle between good and evil. As, um, Rhea Repulsa has, oh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, has turned on her team. So, apparently, the first sort of retcon is that Rita, um, used to be, a ranger actually used to be the green power ranger. Well, that would that would probably if that was in canon with the TV series, that would probably explain how she has the green power coin. Well, obviously, would lead up to the events of that epic um, five part story arc. Um, yep. Yeah, so, um, and she basically she's left um, killed all all the members one by one, leaving only her and Zordon left to stop her from gaining the the Z. Uh, zero. You see, you see, like a, like a year range with a red and a red range. The year range of demons, it's kind of this sort of weird alien, and the red one demons, and it's Zordon. So that's another red card. So Zordon used to be a Power Ranger, and literally, it's like his last sort of moments. Zordon has Alpha send an asteroid to Earth, and that stops Rita's plan, or so we think. So there you come to present day, and this is where obviously the whole the whole thing then starts going downhill because. It's a good while before you get any Power Ranger stuff. For me, this film was what? Two, hour, two, two hours long? In fact, let me, get the, let me get the official running time up. So you bear with me, two ticks. Yeah, so two hours, four minutes. So, so this film goes on for, for a good two hours, and it's not really until like, the last sort of quarter. When you get really Power Ranger stuff, it kind of just feels like just like an, 
for the majority of it, it just feels like another teen drama movie, which I don't need to sit, need to sit through. Because uh, you then meet all the five members of the team, obviously one by one. First up is our leader, Jason, who ends up having a running with a bit of the cops after a school prank. Um, backfires. Then, it's second to me, to me is Kimberly, who is, is dealing with some personal issues. So, it's interesting what they've done is they make each of the Power Rangers each have personal issues that relate to teens. But it's just, uh, cut the teen drama out, get out, release the potties! Third up is Billy, who's constantly bullied, or who's not. Followed by Zack, who's a bit of a lone wolf. And the last of them is Trini, who is struggling with fitting in with her family. And they're going to go, who's not? <laughs> so they try to go with all these different sort of teen dramas that you would think would make them relatable, but it just doesn't work. It's just like, eh, it's more acne. We don't need that. So, whilst in detention, Jason and Billy, they become like good friends and even um, help, they even helps Jason with his, like, his ha house arrest tag. Um, <laughs> and so in return, Billy... Um, he gets driven to an old mine um, later that evening, and that's always where we bent, bump up into all the others. Uh, so Kimmy, along with Zach and Trini, where they discover the power coins and each take one. Um, now, meanwhile, while all this is going on, you've got Rita's body, who has, who, after the bends of the beginning, has seemed to just bum all under, under the surface for all, of the earth for all these years, including murking the depths of the seas. It's been found in the ocean, gets fished out of the way. Oh, poor Rita. Gets fished, she's had worse. Gets fished out, and later uh, she awakes. Really confused, sort of dazed, a little bit. So you could probably a little bit deranged to begin with. I mean, honestly. Right. One thing I really, really love about the film, this is probably going to be the only thing I like, I'm going to sound like, is. Rita's portrayal, because in the because in the TV series she was basically pantomime villain Rita. She re really was that little light the light Corrigan kind of Lee he needed every now now and then. Although in the very beginning Power Rangers wasn't that very dark and bold as it was today. Um, it she was like pantomime villain compared to her partner Lord Zed, who was the more ferocious one of the two. Rita was called the Cold Relief, so. I think it was interesting how for this film, they decided we're going to do a completely different take on Rita and make her more more evil, more diabolical, and more of a villain to be feared, feared of rather than someone to laugh at. And that's brilliant. And you see at the beginning here when she's kind of dazed, confused, trying to get her bearings, you know, because she's been kept dormant for, you know, pretty much centuries. Um, and then she begins setting out uh, finding gold to create her iconic monster, Goldar. Well, back in the day, Goldar 2 was also a, a comedy bit. Even though, Gold, unlike Rita the TV series, Goldar did actually get his hands dirty. He actually did fight the Rangers. I think one time he even did grow. Um, he also had a bit of a comedy with So I was wondering, oh, how are they going to take this? Because um, hmm, I'm not sure a comedy Goldar would work with Elizabeth Banks' Rita. But we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, who, as so by creating obviously Goldar, she's having that way to help her gain the Zeo Crystal um, and start attacking. His, and she starts attacking his, 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 his left, right, and centre. If you don't know what the Zeo Crystal is, it was a source of power um, made connected to the pack to the uh, to the to the Zeo series. So it came right after Mighty Morphin. So that's a bit. It's just cool. It's a power. It's a power source, um, which is um, which can be very powerful for. I mustn't get in the wrong hands, but it was but it was mainly connected to the the um, the CEO series. Anyway, back to the film. So the next morning, each of the kids they now start to experience some things have happened to them. No, not puberty. <laughs> well, they could do because what? Right. What's so funny about Power Rangers is back in my day, my my day, they used they were basically you know young adults and let's pretend to be teens. Now it's twelve-year-olds pretending to be pretending to be sixteen-year-olds. <laughs> Look at the bands right off me. No, um, but no, it's not puberty. They start to experience all these weird superpowers, superhuman qualities, like for example, um, super strength, and some of them actually don't even remember much about what had happened to them the previous night. 
So they then decide to go back to the scene of the crime um, to try and work out what's been going on with, with them, uh, which sees each of them dropping across, um, sort of jumping across cliffs, I should say, sorry, jumping across cliffs. However, Billy um, fails to sort of stick the landing and it's them then falling and everyone drops after him where they end up underwater and discover a spaceship! <laughs> oh, oh no, that's the first problem I've got. Why is it a spaceship? I mean, yeah, the Ranger Space has been a spaceship pre in previous series, like in it with In Space and Lost Galaxy. <gasps> Very gruesome series, Lost Galaxy. If you if you want what if you're watching this under the age of thirty, I would not recommend you watch Lost Galaxy. Lost Galaxy was gruesome. Lost Galaxy was the most adult war all the power and it had the highest death toll ever. It was gruesome. It really was gruesome, Lost Galaxy. <gasps> and actually, I don't think Light Speed Rescue was any help either. But, uh, but oh, but God, yeah. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, so there have been some times where the Rangers' bases have been a spaceship, but those are, those are, so in space, Lost Galaxy, those are the main two I can think of. Um, but it's normally people would be like, but, uh, but, but, but I, was, I was expecting some kind of command centre. So, what's the better way inside the spaceship? They encounter on the next problem. Right, it's problem from here to these next couple of moments. It's problem after problem after problem. The past first problem. Here comes the second problem. Alpha. Oh my god, in this, he completely creeped the hell out of me. Because... The Alpha in this film looks nothing like what he does in the original, ser in the original series. In, um, and um, in terms of his personality, he looks like one of those freaky androids you would get from like a sci one of those much sci-fi action films. It look, look, just looks nothing. He doesn't even, doesn't even feel or act like Alpha at all. It's just, it just feels like just some random robot which just giving the name Alpha. And he's been waiting for all these kids, or rather for a very long time, and then introduces them to Sordom. But, and here's the next main problem. Zordon and Nis does not behave anything like he does in the original source material. Because Zordon's supposed to be the wise mentor to the, to the Power Rangers, who, which, whatever brand they are, or whatever colour they are, or whatever, whoever they may be. But here, he just completely, but here, this, Zordon just behaves absolutely arrogant, downright rude, and completely selfish. Because he only cares about his per gains and not the Rangers' needs. I'm like, oh my god, who is this and what are you doing to the real Zordon? Plus, I thought, I thought it was quite hard to tell whether he was actually communicating with the Rangers because it was just a bunch of, bunch of pixels. I mean, yeah, I know this is, this was 21st, this is worth 21st century special effects, but... Sometimes the olden days were got it right, and how they got Zordon back then was right. You should have just done that. Could have made a bit. Just no, I just felt no, I just oh, I don't like it. So here's where he informs the range the kids. I'm gonna still prefer them as kids because they're not rangers yet. Um, they've been chosen to become the new Power Rangers. It explains that it is their duty to protect the Zeo Crystal. From the forces of evil and tells them all about how Rita intends to remove the crystal from the planet. However, not everyone is kind of on board with it, and, it, and unsurprisingly, it falls to Jason, who of course is going to be the Red Ranger to sort of rally the troops, uh, which he does very well. Um, and eventually, he's able to convince them, you know, the, uh, to the others, you know, you've got to, we've got to take up the cause here. Um, and they then spend the next couple of few weeks. Well, they spent. They spent Right, I, I'm not really sure how much time does pass, because they, at the very least, they do spend at least the next week um, training and trying to figure out how to try to morph um, as rangers, but with very little success. And so to try and boost morale, Alpha decides, you know what, let's show them the Zords! Uh, no, Alpha, it doesn't work like that. It's pick the pick the kids, tell them, give them the morphers, tell them what the morphing court is, they morph, battle the mon monster, then they get the swords. 
and then after that is Megazord. And then you've got, 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 and then that's it, they're all settled in. Initiation doesn't trust it! But hey, you know, every little helps. We could give it a try. Uh, but that plan backfires, Alpha, when uh, Zack literally just takes his out for a little test drive. And then um, a joyride ends up crashing it. Um, but there is a mild breakthrough. I don't feel it ever explain how this happened. There's a mild breakthrough. Because Billy somehow manages to morph. However, it doesn't last uh, once he's kind of aware of it. And then Resordon's now not impressed. He just basically just dismisses them. <laughs> and um, this is when Jace ah, this is when Jace discovers that Zordon's actually being really selfish. That's just using them to bring himself back to the, to the land of living. And well done for, Jay for Jason. I, I don't think I can ever picture the original Jason doing this on TV too. But well done for this Jason to actually lash out at Zordon and go only thinking of by himself. Well done. Good work. Brownie points there. Right. So while all this has been going on, while they've been try trying to fit to morph and become Power Rangers, which they've been failing miserably, somebody elsewhere has made success. That's what I'm talking about. Bad girl, Rita. Because now she makes her way to a jewellery store. Well, perfect. Gold mine for gold. <laughs> and arrives there, ramsacks it. And um, with it, she's able to restore her strength and also her mind. And is able to create her, a staff for herself. And she uses her newfound power to basically just attack the security guard. And it, it ends up destroying the, the, the jewellery store. Oh, with a quick, swift move. <laughs> so I loved it. I loved how, because that, how I loved to see, actually see Rita go hands dirty. Because Rita never normally gets her hands dirty. She never normally enters the field. She's just always just kind of person as the primary villain and just acts a bit of comedy relief. So I'm glad to see this is a development in Rita's character and offered the opportunity to grow. Um, just loved it, actually, really. So. Outside the command centre, oh, we've got to go back to the kids. Because <laughs> it's like, this is just really getting tedious now. It's just like, and, and at this point I'm thinking, right, are we really in the right screen? Or are we just watching some teen, some high school teen, teen at movie? Where they're all going to hug and kiss and make out and stuff. Well, this is kind of what we sort of get in the way, but way because they all make cab, and it's here where they try to bomb one another, um, sharing personal secrets like how Zack is going to lose his sick mother. Billy likes country music. Kim, um, both Kimberly and Jason cop out. Well, Kimberly, well, Kimberly kind of cops out, um, and then Jason goes, "Well, you already know everything about me." And then Trini reveals, actually, she's a lesbian! Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. I mean, we've, we've, mu we've mucked up enough Ranger Law as it is, so that's, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I mean, we don't judge, we, we, we here on this brand, we, we're here on New York Stars, and we always say, you do whatever you want to do, but. Because I'm like, well, can we can you just because well because I'm like, well, can you not just hurry up and more? I'm lost. I'm like, well, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> sticking with Trini, so sticking with Trini, because back home, she then gets ambushed by Rita, who's trying to look for information on the location of the Zeo crystal. But um, I was when Trini realised she doesn't know it, um, which doesn't know anything about that, or it is. Then she then demands that all the rangers come to her. Um, and later on, they do and prove no match for Rita, who literally just ice them all up. Oh, I love this scene. So they try to have a flip so what they do. Right, so even though at this point they haven't morphed, or they've not, they've not been able to morph, or and they're clearly, we haven't seen that much fighting from them, they still try to have a go at Rita, but she just brilliantly dispatches them in one swift move. Has them all tied up and then starts inter 
starts just pl just playing with her food. <laughs> it's like it's she literally she's just playing with her food and just t toying with it. You know, it's just it's like she's not gonna. It's almost like she's prolonging the agony, the inevitable agony where at least one of them is gonna die. But it's but it's it's like. But it's that moment where you think, but it's a, but it's a scene of freedom where you think, oh, well, yeah, she could maybe do it, but she won't. But then, oh my gosh, she has! Go, Rita! Oh, 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 yes, because shock horror, because Rita has been, has got them all where she wants them. It does look a bit like bondage. It's not in, not in that sense, but... It does look, but the way they're all the time, it's, I'm literally I'm thinking, oh, bondage! Who's gonna go first? <laughs> okay, fine, well, fine, fine. Okay, back to you, Rita, they're not gonna go for it. Come back into play. Just toy, just toying with them all. Because you're like, she knows that Warden knows the crystal's location. But I, but I remember watching it first thinking, do they? Does Warden really know? Because I didn't have a clue. I didn't even think I even knew. But apparently one does. And it just happens to be eeny, meeny, miny, blue. It's Billy. And um, she has, well, she fairly obviously she's going to kill them. Now, what is brilliant about this version of Rita compared to the original version? If this was the dub with the original Rita, I wouldn't have believed that, oh, oh yeah, she, she could kill Warden. I wouldn't believe it. But with this version, and I think this is how, what makes Little Banks think more brilliantly. So with this version, we was like, oh yeah, I do believe that this Rita would, if she so pleased, would actually kill w at least one of them, if not all of them. Because um, at this stage of the game, they're just puny humans. They've got no powers, they've got no fighting skills. They don't even more, for Christ's sake. So it wouldn't be... It wouldn't really be that much of a waste if one of them did go. <laughs> so she knows that Blue's got the location. Forces her, forces him, sorry, to reveal that, lo that location um, by starting to kill Black. And then, it, then eventually Billy Kay's reveals the location, the Zero Crystal. So I'm going to keep that, just because it's been a little bit longer. So she reveals the location of the crystal. And then after that, she kills Billy. And literally, in my notes, I put in capital letters, GO RISA! Well, I think it's about three or four. Three exclamation marks! Because I'm like, GO RISA! You go, girl! Because at this, because I'm just like, at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm, at least at this point, I'm that fed up. I'm like, well, just kill them. Go kill them! Kill a lot of them! Kill a lot of them! Lot of them. Pink's next. Pink is next. Kill them. Kill a lot of them. Just kill them, cause they're not. They are nothing like Power Rangers. You can pretend to be Power Rangers. You can pretend. Yeah, you, know, you could learn how to fight all you want. You could learn the martial arts. You can fly about the Lord, but until you morph, you are not proper Power Rangers. So you know, at that point, I was like, well, even though it was a big shot, I was like, what? Because it's very, very rare for a ranger to die. And normally when rangers do die, they get brought to life, back to life at the end of the series. So, But they're like, what, what, what? But at the same time, they're like, GO RITA! Because let's face it, if she didn't kill one of them, I would have. <laughs> Actually, if I didn't beat her shoes, I probably would have slashed their team in half. So do you know what? We've killed Blue. Then kill Black because she started, so we may as well finish. And then, what well, to be fair, do all the girls, just so it's not sexist. Down goes Pink. Just leave Red and Yellow standing. <laughs> but make what comes next awkward, but hey, at least it shows how shows that, I'm, that I can be a bad, badass bitch like Lord Zed. <laughs> yeah, go, Rita! Right, so before we can get to the crescendo, uh, the rest of the team bring Billy's body. This is so undignified. Bring his body back to the command 
was the starship, we'll call it, because it's not really a command centre. Um, that's just me being nostalgic in my notes. Take him back to the, to the spaceship! To the spaceship! And they all agree that they would lay down their lives for the world of it. And in doing so, they finally are able to unlock the power of the morphing grid. But instead of Zoron coming back, it's Billy who's brought back to life. So finally, 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 after what feels like three quarters of the way through, we finally see the Power Rangers become the Power Rangers. They finally morph, gain their Ranger abilities, access to the Zords, but it just feels a bit sort of meh. It just feels a bit meh because they don't because they don't properly stay morphed, do they? Because when you see them in the cockpits, they've got their um, the helmets off, so it's just a bit sort of meh. What's the point? It's just like it's almost like they're just a bunch of children playing dress up costumes. It's like they're going to a fancy dress party. They've all chosen their favourite ranger to dress up as. <laughs> oh dear. Well, given the location of the Eucharist, it could be a party because um. Because, as we're about to get to that, so, the location of Zero Crystal, this is where I could not believe when Billy revealed it to Risa. It happens to be, right, at the last place you would expect it to be. The, the location of Zero Crystal, I can't believe I'm about to say this. The location of Zero Crystal was at a local Krispy Kreme. <laughs> oh. And what I think is even funny is they actually do have a little scene of Rita actually sampling So the Delights! You get a little moment of having a donut. It's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, we can wait. Yeah, we can wait. We can, uh, yeah, she's like, she's like, yeah, we can wait about five minutes. No, but. The Earth's got no decent protectors. We can wait. All the time in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, it's just hilarious. Right. So, that's a little sugar rush. Gets to work on creating Goldar. And even sends a pussy patrol to distract the rangers. And using their swords, they are, they are able to... The Sitio Stead Rangers. They're able to catch up to reach on Goldor. However, Goldor is able to manage to get the upper hand and um, sort of outmaneuver the Rangers. It's like a fiery pit. However, that very results in the Rangers being able to select like, for them their Mega Lord um, to try and level the play the playing field. Um, whilst at the same time, Rita ends up merging with Goldor. And the two sides literally just battle one another. But after that, it gets gets messy because eventually, and this is it, right? This is where it gets really messy because at one point, because eventually, the Rangers are able to defeat Goldar, but it's like a sort of flash. It's like a blink you miss. It's like one moment Rita's in Goldar, the next minute Goldar's been defeated. It's, it was ha. I mean, this was handled really, really poorly. I mean, one of the good things about Power Rangers book to see is a Megazord battle. We didn't really get it. Because eventually the Rangers are able to defeat Goldor. However, Rita manages to survive. Um, and she gets offered by the rain, by Jason what like one last chance to basically surrender. Um, but what I about Rita here is, even though she probably knows she's probably defeated, she brilliantly and and fit, um, she brilliantly challenges them. Challenges the Rangers. Go, you know, you think you've won? Do ya? Do ya? Do ya? Yeah? You think you've won? Yeah? Well, I'm not the only one! Others will come! You know I'm right! And of course she is right, because we've seen it through how many years it is now. God, how many years has it been Power Rangers now? 30? 35? It's been a while, like. it's been a while. But she's right! Others would come, because we know that happens, but... um. And that she's, and um, then she basically gets to like a rage at the, at the dying light and literally just goes right, hurls herself at at the Megazord. But they give her like one quick backhander, um, 
all the way to the dark side of the moon. Uh, do you reckon they just rushed out the writing suite? Did it, do I, who wrote this? Did he actually had no, literally had like what, 10 or 15, like, like half an hour or so to get this last bit done? Of the film done. So they thought, oh, we'll just have to suppose Rita. I'll just give one quick backhand for the movie. Because, like, really? Really? You've, all the good work you've done to make Rita an actually fearsome villain, actually one that actually could go head to head with the Rangers herself. Really? Just one quick backhand. Uh. So, the town saves. Power Rangers are praised as local heroes. Obviously, with no clue on who they are, um, and the Rangers return to their, their lives, in, uh, including detention. Which, try, right? This is the this is the final hate of the of the film. At the end of the film, they they go back to detention and they try to set up the possibility of further stories because I think the idea was this was supposed to be film one of six. So they. So, yeah, so the people who made this, they really had high hopes, didn't they? They really thought that we would get on board this tra this crap first. They really, really thought we would get part of this, that we'd want to have six move a six movie arc. They really thought that through. Um, so they tried to start further stories by Im involving a certain legendary ranger. And you know what? I'm kind of glad this flopped so that that never happened. Because, and for those of you who know what I'm talking about, that ranger, his story was absolutely brilliant. I don't want it to get retold. I don't want it to be recreated. I don't want a different version of it. I don't even want... Okay, so, no. So, I'm kind of glad we didn't get there. But, that was the last one. I was like, oh, are you really going to go for it? You really are pushing this. You really are. Have you not, pi have you not pissed off? Oh, that's all enough for it in these last two hours. No, you're going to do one more. No. Oh, so I'm quite glad we didn't get that far. Because, oh, my God. Oh, dear. Basically, this is another another failed... Because the, the other two movies that actually involved the Rangers and the cast in the series, in the actual TV series, they didn't do well either. And like I said, for, for Turbo, if it hadn't been for Diva Tox, that would have been a major flop. flop. Bigger flop. They didn't work either. But this was, but this is kind of supposed to be like what a reboot? No, it just didn't work because they got what? What was it? Twenty mins of Power Ranger content. Twenty mins. Twenty five. Generous. We did. We hardly got any. We hardly saw the Rangers. The Rangers. We hardly saw them more. We hardly saw their Zord. We hardly saw them fight in action. We just got too much teen drama, and so. Power for Rita every now and then to pop up, you'd be completely forgiven for thinking, oh my god, am I on the wrong screen? Is this some American, American soppy teenage drama f the film? Am I on the right screen? Uh, yeah, you'd be forgiven for thinking that. Um, but yeah, but it just did not have any of the stuff we can know from Power Rangers, and it just felt, it just felt wrong. Because Alpha was wrong. Sordon was wrong. All of it was just felt wrong. The only thing that was good of the changes they did was Rita. Because if you go, because if you remember her from the series, you know she's a bumbling buffoon. She's a comedy char character. She's, she's like a panto bit them. But, um, but, but yet here, they made her ferocious. They made her fearsome. They made her better. And that's why I gave her stand-up character. Because if we talk about standouts to sort of wrap this up, for me, the only person I could think to actually give the start catch to is Rita. She, for me, earned it. The rest just don't. And Elizabeth Banks did a brilliant portrayal here. She made the character her own. She made the catch while well, making the catch still feel recognisable, um, despite her complete costume change. And... You got to see Rita a different, Rita a different, different, different light. I thought she did brilliant. It made the character work, and that was so successful. Oh, I would have loved maybe to have a little bit more. I would love more from Rita. It's that moment. Rita kills Blue. <laughs> 
this is a brilliant thing, because when you watch it the first time, you, you just think, OH MY GOD, SHE'S KILLED BY THEM! For two reasons. One, you don't see it coming. And two, and these will be for the people like me who grew up with the series, you wouldn't expect that from Risa. You wouldn't think she'd be able to swat a fly. And yet here, and yet here we are. She's gone. She's done it. She's killed an actual Power Ranger. Well done, Risa. Go, Risa! <laughs> you just couldn't believe it. She actually has the... Yeah, and that's what I think this film's done. It shows that Rita is actually capable of doing these things. It's just she never got to see it happen because she was a completely different person in the series. But, uh, but it's so expected. And what I love is how in that scene, Rita has full control. She is literally just dominating this, 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 this scene from the get-go. And I love how she just toys with the young, with the kiddies. Loves how she's toy with them, prolonging the agony. You know, making them fe fear, is she going to kill us? Is she not going to kill us? Could she? Can she not? And she does! And you just have to go, just be all in, just be like, GO RISA! There you go, brilliant, that's, that's my start, stand that moment. Right, thank you so much for joining us today. If you love the show, do click the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, carry on, make you click the subscribe button. That way, once you are subscribed, you never miss a moment. When you click the like button,